This video will modify the welcome screen of Create React App and make all the elements draggable using React hooks. Then we'll see how to use dragging functionality to create UI elements. We'll build this overlay that exposes a background image and snaps to the edges based on where it is dragged to on the screen. We'll use the excellent React Use Gesture library that makes using mouse and touch events very intuitive and easy. Let's get started by setting up a Create React App project. Let's initiate the project. And let's open it in a code editor. I'm also going to install the React Use Gesture library. Now that we have our project ready, let's add the ability to drag this logo on the screen. First, let's add a state that will store the X and Y coordinates of the logo once it's being dragged. For that, we'll use the use state hook from React. We'll call it logo position and it will have two coordinates, X and Y. The initial value will be zero for both. And as we drag the logo on the screen, these coordinates will be updated with the values of the offset of the logo. So let's use these coordinates when we display the logo in its relative position. So first we'll add a div container that will contain the logo and we'll set its styles. We'll set its position to relative. And then the top will be the Y coordinate of our logo position. And the left will be the X coordinate. So let's try to change the, these coordinates and see that the logo actually moves. So we'll set the X to 100 and our logo moves accordingly. So now we need some sort of a callback that will be continuously called when the user drags the logo over the screen. And this callback should contain the X and Y positions of our logo as it's being dragged. And for that, we'll use the use drag hook from React use gesture. This hook returns a function, we'll call it bind logo position. And we're going to take this function and add it as an attribute to our container div. This hook accepts a callback as an argument and this callback will be exactly what we wanted because it will be called continuously by React user gesture and it will always give us the X and Y values of the logo as it's being dragged on the screen. So it's going to have a single argument, let's call it params. If we'll go to the documentation of React use gesture and to gesture state, we'll see all the attributes that are being passed in this params argument. The one we're interested in is the offset. It gives us the offset since the first gesture. We're going to use this offset to set the X and Y coordinates. So we'll use the set logo position function. We'll set the X coordinate to the X offset. The offset is actually an array of two items. In the first position with the index zero, we'll get the X offset. And in the index one, we'll get the Y offset. So now a dragon should work and this callback should be called by React use gesture and the offset should be set to our state and then reflected in this container div that says the position of the image. The dragon now works. We get this highlight that we can disable using CSS. We'll open the CSS file and add user select none. Let's make an improvement to our code. Instead of using use state, we're going to use the React Spring library. This library is by the same authors as React Use Gesture, and it's an excellent library to use together with the gesture library. So let's import React Spring and see how we can use it instead of uh, using the state and then setting the styles like this. In one of the previous videos on my channel, I focus on React Spring, so if that's something that interests you, you can check it out as well. Instead of using the use state hook, we'll use the use spring hook from React Spring. But the logic will be very similar. Now the logo position will be an object with the X and Y coordinates. We no longer have the set logo position function and instead we'll replace it with calls to set the values of the coordinates. When we set the styles of the div, we no longer need to specify the position relative attribute. And instead of using top and left, we can use Y and X. And one last thing, we're going to change the div container to animated div. This is something provided by React Spring and it makes the animation more efficient. Let's import it from the library as well. Our dragging now works the same as before and now we use React Spring to set the X and Y coordinates of the logo as we drag it. Now let's add the dragging capabilities also to this paragraph and to this link. To do that, I'll simply duplicate the logic of the hook we created three times and bind these functions to the other containers that I'm going to create. 
Now all three elements are draggable. So the same logic is basically duplicated three times. We have three use spring hooks. Each one of them sets the X and Y coordinates of the element that it's animating. And we have three use drag hooks and each one of them sets the X and Y coordinates of the offset of the element. Let's now implement the overlay that will cover our screen and that we can drag up and down to expose the image behind it. First, we'll add a div for the overlay. And we'll also add a div for the background image. Let's create classes for these divs. We want both of them to have an absolute position and cover the entire screen. So we'll set the width and the height to 100%. Currently the app header has a background, but we want to remove it and set it as the background color of the overlay. And as for the background image, we'll add an image as a background for the entire screen. And this is just a random image I found from Unsplash. So this is what our page looks like right now, but we want the background to be behind the overlay. So for the background, we'll set the Z index to minus two. And for the overlay, we'll set it to minus one. So it will be above the background image, but still below the content that we previously had. So now our overlay covers the background image. If we'll set the top to some value, we should see uh, the background image behind our overlay. When we're going to animate the overlay, this is what we'll do. We'll set the top position based on where the user drags the overlay. So before we begin writing code, we need to also add a div that will contain this handle here that we'll use to drag the overlay up and down. We'll add a div that will be the container of the handle. And inside this div, we'll add the handle itself. This is going to be the CSS for our handle. The container will have a distance of 10 pixels from the top and it will have the full width of the screen and the height will be 10 pixels. And then the handle itself We'll have this styling and it will actually be invisible. We'll only set it to be visible when we hover over it. So this is our handle. Obviously dragging it doesn't work and this is what we'll implement, but we'll use this handle to drag this overlay up and down. We already know how to implement dragging for an element. So let's apply it to this uh, div, the handle that we're going to use to drag the overlay. So I'm going to clone the same logic for the handle. But this time we don't need both of the coordinates. Now we only need the Y coordinate because this handle will only be draggable up and down. Let's convert this div to an animated div and apply the styles. Now our handle is draggable and we can drag it only on the Y axis up and down. We want our handle to also affect the overlay behind it. So when we drag the handle up and down, it should also drag the overlay as well. Since we also want to animate the overlay now, let's convert it to an animated div as well. And also use the styles of the handle position to animate the overlay. So now when we drag the handle, the overlay drags with it and exposes the background. But if you let it go, it doesn't snap to the edges. And another problem is that it goes out of bounds of the screen. So first, let's take care of the issue that it goes out of bounds. If you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave it a like so it will reach more people. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get updates about new videos. Within our use drag hook, when we set the value of the Y coordinate for the handle, let's check if it is within our range or not. Instead of offset, we want to use the XY object. This is actually an array that gives us the values, the pointer position, or the scroll offset. So we'll use it in this case instead of the offset. And we're going to check if we are within the range of zero and the height of the screen, we're going to set the value. And otherwise we won't. So we want the Y coordinate to be above or equals to zero. And we want it to be below or equals to the screen height. We'll configure it as a constant. We'll set it to the height of the window and we'll subtract 30 pixels. The reason we subtract 30 pixels is because the handle has a height of 10 pixels. And then we also have a margin of 10 pixels on top and we want a margin of 10 pixels at the bottom. So this is how much room we'll leave for the overlay when it snaps to the bottom of the screen. 
So let's see if now our overlay is limited to be always within the range that we specified for it. So now we cannot drag below this point and also we cannot uh, drag to negative values. Now let's implement how the overlay should uh, behave when we release it in the middle of the screen. When we release it in the first half of the screen, we want it to snap back to zero. And if we release it in the bottom half, we want it to snap to the bottom. So first we need to somehow figure out that the user has let go of the handle. So once the user lets go, we want to have some sort of an indicator. And then we can check where did the user let go of this handle. So again, we'll go back to the documentation, to the params, and we have this Boolean here uh, dragging. And this variable specifies if this component is currently being dragged or not. So when this value turns to false, it's an event that we'll receive that will indicate that the user has let go of the handle. So let's check the value in our callback. So when this value is true, we want to behave as before. We want to set the value of our handle position. However, if it's false, it means that the user has let go of the handle. So now we want to check where did they let it go? Was it the top half of the screen or the bottom one? So in the first case, the Y value will be above halfway of the screen. That means that it's the bottom half. In this case, we want to snap the overlay to the bottom. Otherwise, it was the top half and then we want to snap it to zero. So if we we'll drag and release it here, it snaps to the top. However, if you drag and release it at the bottom, it snaps to the bottom. You probably notice though that we don't have an animation. When we release it, it just snaps immediately. And what we want to do is we want it to slide and gradually change its coordinates, not immediately reappear in the other position. And this is the advantage of using React Spring because implementing this is extremely easy. All we need to do is change set to start. This tells React Spring to not set the value right away, but animate the value and transition to the new value. And this is how easy it is to implement something like this with React Spring. Now, when we let go of the handle, it simply animates to the value we specify for it. The final thing we want to implement is that the overlay should be semi-transparent when we drag it to the bottom. When the overlay is all the way at the bottom like this, we want to set the opacity to 0.8. But then when we drag it back and it covers the screen entirely, we want to set the opacity to one. So we somehow need to set the opacity in the range of one at the beginning and 0.8 at the bottom. And this is another thing that React Spring makes extremely easy. Let's go to our overlay and set the opacity. So we already know that we want the opacity to depend on the Y coordinate because as we drag the handle up and down, we want the opacity to change based on that value. But we somehow need to transform this value from the Y axis to a range in between one and 0.8, because at this point, the opacity is supposed to be one, so the overlay will be completely visible. But at this point, it's supposed to be 0.8. So we need to take the values of the Y coordinate and somehow to transfer them to this range in which the starting point is one and the ending point is 0.8. And React Spring has a function just for that. The to function allows us to transform these values from one range to the other. The first array will be the range of the values that we want to transfer from. So it will start at zero and it will end at screen height. These are the values of the Y coordinate. This is the range that the Y coordinate goes in and the values that we want to translate it to are 1 and 0 0.8 because this is the range that we want to create and this is pretty much everything we need to do to achieve the opacity effect that we're looking for now as we drag the overlay the value of the opacity changes based on the value of the y coordinate and the beginning point the value is 1 and then on the bottom the value is 0 0.8 and if we drag it back the value goes back to 1. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe to receive updates about new videos about React that I'm going to upload.